If you're looking for a good Fallen Giant save in FM22, then look no further than Blackburn Rovers. Once signing great players like Alan Shearer and winning the Premier League in 1995, in recent times they have fallen as far as League One, being relegated in 2017, although they did bounce straight back up. Our challenge today is to get Blackburn back to the Premier League and hopefully even take them a little further than that. Before we start though, let's have a quick look around the club on FM22. Last season, the club finished 8th, not a huge amount off of the playoffs. This season, the board wants us to reach said playoffs, although I'm hoping to go one better and win promotion at the first attempt. This club vision stuff will update a bit more by the way, but at the moment the database still thinks it's last season, so there's not a lot for the board to judge us on given the season is already over. Looking at the squad screen, it's nice to see the defence is hopefully in order, with our goalkeeper and two of our defenders in the top five players at the club. There's also a nice bit of potential in the form of Dolan as a left winger, as well as John Buckley and Brierton Diaz. At the moment, this is the team I would probably go with to start the season. Blackburn fans, let me know down in the comments how close this is to real life. I purposely haven't looked at how you're lining up this season. The team looks fairly strong in every position. If I had to improve somewhere, I'd probably look at a striker as I'm not sure Gallagher is the right fit for this. But given this database already has the new transfers in there, there's not a lot in the way of transfer budget. So unless we can get a loan in, he probably will be the one starting. Looking to the future, there is some promising players in the development centre like Ashley Phillips. Fortunately though, he is only a National League standard player right now. If we absolutely do want to free up some money to spend on players, I'd probably be looking at selling Jack Vell, who I don't think will ever be good enough for what we want to do, as well as says Modix and Piers. But for now, let's get through the summer transfer window and see if anything happens. With the transfer window done, let's take a look at the players leaving the club first. Jack Vell does end up leaving, departing to join Notts County in a deal netting us 125k. Says Modic also leaves, heading over to Montreal for £210,000. Although, looking at this now, I'm pretty sure he is a player that only just joined the club, so whoops. And whilst we haven't spent a penny on players in, we have managed to add two new squad members, both on threes. The first of these is Renan, a 20-year-old Brazilian left-back or central defender. Currently performing at a Skybet Championship level and with the potential to become a Premier League standard player, I just couldn't resist adding a Brazilian to the team. Our other signing of the window is Australian central attacking midfielder Tom Rogic. As he's been playing for Celtic for the past few seasons, we know he can compete at the top level and his arrival allows us to use Bradley Dack as a striker rather than as a cam when we need him. The start of the season hasn't gone badly with four wins, but the three losses are slightly concerning and I'm hoping we'll improve as the season goes on. With that though, let's simulate for our first season with Blackburn. Before we do though, there is some potentially exciting news in the form of a takeover. Definitely something to keep an eye on. Well, we might never have gotten a takeover at the club, but we have had a fantastic season. Let's take a quick look at the cup competitions first. So we're knocked out in the fifth round of the FA Cup, eventually losing 1-0 to Norwich. And we also lost in the fourth round of the Carabao Cup, losing to West Ham, so nothing to cheer about here. But how did we do in the league? We had a pretty difficult start, to be honest. August was patchy with more losses than wins, and then September was also pretty poor with only two points from four games. In October, though, we did start to turn things around. This was partly due to us changing assistant manager and signing Thomas Schneider, who has some decent tactical knowledge which really helps when he is having to manage all the games in a season. This results in an almost instant upturn in form, only dropping two points in his first six games in charge. Good form continued throughout, including an 18-game unbeaten run between mid-December and the end of March. We only lost two more games between there and the end of the season, although one of those was against West Brom in the very, very last game. But this this is a performance that sees Blackburn finish second behind Sheffield United and returning to the Premier League in the first season of our simulation. The only annoying thing about it is that the loss on the final day actually cost us the title, but still it is a great turnaround from the start of the season. Now we need to instantly turn our attentions to the new season and building a team capable of staying in the top flight. I want to keep all of the highlighted players on the screen, mainly due to a mixture of current ability and potential, but I do think that improvements can be made to the rest of the squad if we are able to. Saying that though, I wouldn't be mad at keeping a good portion of this team intact. 
Sam Gallagher, for example, ended the season with 30 goals, so it is probably worth at least having him in the squad, and players like Bradley Dack and Tom Rodgic will most likely stay as well. We have been given £33 million by the board following our promotion. Let's see what we can go and do with it. Before we get into the transfers in, let's take a quick look at the transfers out. Mostly it's youth players leaving that weren't ever going to meet our expectations, and they're moving on to increase the amount of spare wage budget we have. Do you receive a £2.2 .2 million fee for Hayden Carter, but that's about it. Daniel Ayala also leaves on a free after refusing to sign a new contract. With the new Premier League season looming on the horizon, I have added five new players to the Blackburn team. The very first one through the door is Igor Divev, a Russian centre-back from CSKA Moscow. He always seems to be available pretty cheaply on FM, which is ideal for us. We don't have a huge budget. We managed to pick him up for a touch over £6 million. Keeping with the defensive signings, we next sign Nico Mantilla from RB Salzburg for £6 million. He did well in the Austrian league last season, keeping 10 clean sheets and conceding less goals than games played, which is always a good sign for a goalkeeper. More importantly, he has some great potential and I'm hoping by the end of the season he will be much improved. Or an absolute wreck after being battered by Liverpool. I guess we'll wait and see. With our couple of defensive signings made, we move to the other end of the pitch in the search for goals, and we sign Vincent Janssen in the hope that he can provide them. You do have to pay £11.5 million for him, but he scored 17 goals in the league for Antwerp last season, and hopefully this is something he can now bring to Blackburn. Our next signing is Reese Nelson on a free from Arsenal. Another player with decent potential and bags of place. He can play on either wing as well, which will offer us some decent depth. And our final signing is an addition to the midfield in the form of James Garner. Those of you who've been around the channel for a while will know I absolutely love Garner, especially his passing attribute, and he was transfer listed for £4.3 million by United, so I really couldn't say no. This means our best 11 looks like this according to the assistant manager. I don't expect this team to be beating Manchester City, but I do think it is good enough to compete against the lower mid-tables at least and ensure survival this season. Am I right though? Let's go and find out. Well, it turns out I'm not. The first day of the new season starts absolutely fantastically with a 6-0 win against Leeds. We then lose to Liverpool and Arsenal, but these aren't necessarily worrying losses as I'd expect a newly promoted team to struggle against teams of that calibre. The score lines though are concerning and possibly were a sign of things to come. Up until October, the team continues to do really well, seeing the team rise all the way to 7th place. From there though, it's a complete and utter disaster. In fact, Blackburn don't win another match until the end of January. Very shortly after this, we switch tactics, with the thought process being that having no defensive midfielder is potentially leaving us too open at the back. And for a short time, this work is getting us wins against Aston Villa, Leeds and United. And then we collapse again. Two games before the end of the season, we're sitting in 17th, just outside of the drop zone. But losses against Bournemouth and West Ham end up costing us and we don't survive our first season back in the Premier League. It's all also means we're probably likely to lose some players this summer, with relegation clauses activated for Igor Diev, Nico Manti, Reese Nelson and James Garner, as well as having a lot of players on Premier League wages now rather than Championship wages. I'm confident we can go straight back up, but it's going to be a very long summer. We've been given a transfer budget of just over £10 million by the board to try and rebuild for the season ahead. We're also receiving 80% of any transfer revenue, so hopefully that will allow us to at least fund some more purchases if needed. Well, as I alluded to, we do lose some players throughout the window due to relegation clauses being activated or just the players not wanting to be here anymore. We can see the fairly long list here, including Daniel Butterworth, Ryan Hedges, Edan... Dolan, Tom Rogic, Sam Gallagher, Reese Nelson, they all leave fairly early in the transfer window, with Vincent Janssen leaving in early August as well. We also have a few other departures like McCande leaving for Millwall. It does mean we get around £40 million added to the transfer budget, and we've spent that rebuilding the squad. For the majority of our signings this summer, I'm looking for players that can make a contribution now, but also improve and grow into a Premier League team in the future. Nuno Tavares arrives from Arsenal for a £4 million fee to be the first of those players, offering great competition for Harry Pickering in that position. Next up is our replacement for Janssen, Danish striker Fagir from Stuttgart for £8 million. 
The main thing that attracted me here was the great finishing and composure for a 21 year old. You can also see he's made a great start to life at Blackburn. We then add some depth to our midfield with the signing of Erahon from St Mirian for £3 million and competition on the right wing with the signing of Daniel James for £4 million. Odair joins us as a breakthrough prospect that we're hoping will become a first team player of the future and Bielik joins us from Birmingham to provide competition for the defensive midfielder role. We also sign young winger Ian Fontaine from QPR before loaning him back out to Peterborough for the season. And he is followed by Taylor Harwood Bellis on a free for Manchester City to provide us some additional cover in defence. Jamie Shackleton also joins on a free from Leeds. And we also sign Alex Awobi from Everton at the end of his contract. So Geltart then joins us on loan for the season to be the backup to Fagir in case of injuries or suspension. And our final two seasons of a busy transfer window are Goncalo Estevez from Sporting for 3.8 million and Brazilian goalkeeper Luiz Jr. to take over as our main goalkeeper due to Nico Manti's unhappiness and unwillingness to stay at the club. Although he never ends up leaving as no one ever makes an offer for him, but he probably now won't play a huge amount this season. Looking at our squad, it does mean we've now got several players with some great potential for the future. And although my assistant referee reckons this is our best 11, and it probably is on paper, I'm going to ensure both Fagia and Luis Jr. are picked in every match possible in order to maximise their game time and hopefully get them Premier League ready. Let's simulate forward another season and find out if that's the right decision. Before we have a look at how Blackburn have done in the third season of this rebuild, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you want to continue with this save yourself once the video is over, check out my Patreon now. The third season has been very good for Blackburn Rovers, beginning with a great run in the Carabao Cup. The squad's competition starts with a second round tie against League One outfit Lincoln City, a match that Blackburn dominate throughout, eventually winning 4-1. They then face Leicester City and are actually at least comfortable against them. After the match ends 1-1, Blackburn go through on penalties, facing Southampton in the next match that they also absolutely dominate, winning 5-1. Another Premier League team in the form of Aston Villa is swept aside in the quarter-finals. But the semi-final match against West Ham is a step too far and Blackburn end up losing 5-3 across the two legs. We have a similarly good run in the FA Cup, beating Millwall and Fulham in the third and fourth rounds to set up yet another tie against Leicester, another one that is won by Blackburn. Brighton and Everton are also beaten in the quarter and semi-finals, meaning Blackburn have yet to concede a goal going into the final against Liverpool. However, this dramatically changes in this match where we concede four, proving that we aren't quite ready to compete with the elite clubs yet. What we are able to do though is compete well in the Championship. Although the opening match of the season is less than ideal, this turns out to be a rare loss for Blackburn this season. We go the next three games of the opening month without conceding at all and we don't lose again until the start of October against Southampton. There is another loss to Bristol City in November, but then we win all the way through until January. Essentially, the losses are far apart and there's no real poor run of form this season. In the games we have lost as well, there aren't any huge score lines, with the worst defeat being a 3-0 loss to Middlesbrough. We have had quite a few games, however, where we've scored 3 or 4 ourselves, and this is in large part due to Fagir's performance, with our new signing scoring 31 goals this season. Harry Pickering also has an outstanding 23 assists, and that combo has allowed us to win the championship this season, finishing on 100 points with some very good performances from a lot of our players. Next season, the board just wants us to avoid relegation, something we didn't quite manage last time out. To attempt to do it this time, we have a budget of just under £50 million, which should be ample to add to this squad of already good players. As always, of course, we do have some players leaving the club. This season is Rankin Costello heading to Sunderland for £3 million, Kamansky departing for Genk, and Scott Wharton moving to Nantes for just under £12 million. Last season signings Ethan Erahun and Daniel James also head over to Verona and St Etienne respectively. On the transfers inside, it's a bit of a difficult window. The trouble with having a £50 million budget is that it's difficult to spend it if your preferred players keep joining other clubs. After this happened multiple times, I decided to focus on bringing in less players but for larger fees with the hope that they can bring us enough success this season that we can survive and improve again in the last transfer window of the simulation. The first of these players is Konate, signed from Brentford for a club record £34.5 million. He's clearly Premier League ready, having had three good seasons with Brentford and I'm hoping he will be a 
difference maker in defense. Next in, I decided to add some experience to the team and Granit Xhaka comes in to fulfill that role. He had actually left Arsenal last season to play for Nantes in the French top flight and they are happy to give him to us for just over £5 million. Which I personally think is a great fee for a very experienced player in the top flight who still has some fantastic technical attributes. The next player to arrive is Sebastian Szymanski from Dynamo Moscow with a transfer costing us £9 million, hence the departure of Daniel James. He's definitely an improvement if he can chip in with some assists and goals this season, this would have been a very good signing. Our final purchase is Brandon Williams. With Callum Britton leaving after declining rapidly in the last season, we needed a new right back to add some depth. And Williams is another addition with experience of having played in the Premier League at a top level. Our final addition is the loan of Kaid Gordon from Liverpool for the season, just to provide us with some backup for Fagia if needed. We are playing an almost identical formation to last season, with Fagia being chosen as the only player that I want in the side for every game possible. So far we haven't lost in the first three Premier League games. Let's see if that continues throughout the whole season. Yeah, no, that didn't continue, did it? In fact, it didn't continue very long at all. We started the season really, really well again, as we saw those three matches. We, you no, know, we haven't won all of them. We've drawn two of them, but we've managed to not lose a game. And then, yeah. I mean, September, we haven't won at all. October, we haven't won at all. We did win a couple of games at the end of November, but then you've got to look all the way down to January before we win another one. And then it's literally not until May before we win another one. We suddenly pull a 5-1 win out against Everton. But yeah, we've had a dreadful, dreadful season again. This rebuild is absolutely kicking my ass. We have got relegated for the second time in this rebuild back to the championship 31 points one point behind fulham quite a bit in front of 19th place at brighton but quite a quite a long way off of any sort of reasonable survival although the top teams i mean there's a big gap between walls in 10th and west ham in 9th it does look like there's been some really good performances from teams manchester city have absolutely dominated everyone we also got knocked out in the quarter final by nottingham forest in the fa cup and then the fourth round of the carabao cup by west ham united we're having a look at the squad and let's have a look at goals uh Fagia managed to get 17 goals which isn't horrific i'm not sure how many of those were in the league 13 it's not bad as a sort of debut season in the premier league i guess but look this is the problem We've got no one else scoring goals. I mean, uh, Diaz here scoring six and then Kaid Gordon scoring five. But we just haven't scored at all. If I have a quick look as well, I'm kind of interested. Uh, Luis Junior is considered 57 this season. Three clean sheets, 57 goals conceded. We have messed this up royally in this rebuild. We've got to now try and get back into the Premier League again for the third time in this rebuild this is going to be the final season can we at least finish the rebuild in the premiership you know we're not going to get to the champions league now that's for sure but can we at least finish in the premier league we have got a ten thousand pound worth of transfer budget and a wage budget it means we're already overspending by thirty-five thousand pounds the squad itself if it was to stay like this i mean this will get us promoted 100 percent kanate is fantastic uh brandon williams absolutely fine the potential in this squad with kanate uh, for gear odar is really really good as well estevez is decent we've got a lot of good players in here and we had some decent performances Howard bellis actually had really good performances so i'm not sure why our assistant manager didn't choose to play him a little bit more if we're looking at appearances it looks like i mean sismanski played the most games followed by kanate james garner uh Figuier, obviously we had him to play as many games as possible louise jr playing basically all of the games in goal renan um, so it looks like Renan and Kanate were the main back two. Lewis Travis in there quite a lot. We've got players down here. I mean, Bradley Dax made two appearances. Odar, we kind of knew, wouldn't make a lot. John Buckley has made a lot of appearances, but all off the bench. Uh, Igor Divev. I'm surprised he hasn't made more appearances as well. I'm also surprised he's not kicking up about wanting to leave. Uh, Nico Manti has made 
a few appearances um four of them in the league five conceded one clean sheet he hasn't fared a lot better either but now we need to go and rebuild the team again and let's be honest a lot of these players are gonna leave as we expected at the end of the transfer window a lot have players have ended up leaving the club this summer Alex Arobi has gone over to Bournemouth. That was a £6.5 million deal. Shackleton has also gone to Bournemouth in a £3.3 million deal. Harry Pickering finally leaves the club, goes over to Leeds. He's been a really, really good servant to us over the last few seasons. Although he didn't end up playing a lot last season, to be fair. John Buckley has gone to Sheffield United in a deal costing them £7.25 million. Uh, Devev has also gone to Bournemouth. Bournemouth have bought a lot of our players for 9.75 million, uh, which is a little bit of a profit for us. Canate is the big loss of this summer. But unfortunately, after we bought him for 34.5 million, he had a relegation release clause of 28 million, which was activated very, very quickly by Everton at the start of the window. Also following him out the door on another relegation release clause is Louise Jr., our goalkeeper, heading over to Leeds for 9.5 million. Again, at least we've made a little bit of a profit on him. Nuno Tavares goes over to Aston Villa as well for 11.75 million. And another relegation clause and again it's a little bit of profit made it's not ideal the big big sell though was brandon williams for 44 million pounds this is after we bought him for 12 million last season 44 million pounds to crystal palace it was such a big deal that the board didn't even give us the choice in this they just sold him and told us to deal with it but as we can see we have invested that money quite heavily spending 126 million pound in this transfer window we're gonna have a quick run through the players we have bought robert dolce i'm assuming you'd say his name colombian left back i'm not sure if he comes up as a wonder kid but he does come with a good amount of potential. He's not described as a wonder kid. As we can see, Dolce here valued for a fair amount of money. We've ended up paying £27.5 million to bring him to the club. With a view to him progressing into a Premier League player for next season. We then brought in Sean Longstaff. I think I'm actually doing these in reverse order. But never mind. He came in. He was at Watford. We bought him for 9.75 million. He's a bit of cover in midfield and as a defensive midfielder. He's probably not going to improve a lot, but he will be a good squad player for this season we then brought in onana onana playing at verdon um, on loan from everton in the last season 7.75 million he started off very very well he's another one he can improve we're having a quick look at the reports good premier league quality so hopefully another one that can come in and do something for us. We then brought in Mark McGuinness again. Just a bit of a squad player to cover that centre-back area. £6 million paid for Mark McGuinness. Jacopo Fazzi is an Italian left winger that we've brought in. He's actually not going to be our main left winger this season. £7 million played to bring him over from Florentina. Palestri also comes in from Manchester United. We managed to get him for £4 million. He will be our sort of backup over on the right. He's very, very good as a winger as well. We've then got Luke Thomas we've brought in. It was kind of a little bit of a replacement due to Tavares leaving, due to Pickering leaving. Uh, we managed to pick him up for £9.5 million, which is maybe a little bit of an overspend. But again improvement can be made it could be another one that goes up and be a good premier league player on the right hand side we've brought in tino livramento obviously english uh playing at southampton which is where he is in real life at the moment we bought him for 20 million again he's made a good start to life here at blackburn and he could improve still so he could be a good one for next season we also brought back Joe Geldhart after being on loan with us a couple of seasons ago. He went back to Lees. He played a little few games there for him. We just brought him back for 9.5 million. We had to part exchange a player as well, but it wasn't anyone substantial. So that wasn't too much of an issue. Uh, we'll have a look at our goalkeeper first. Obviously, 
with us selling our main goalkeeper, we need to bring in another one. I think Stefan Jorgic is going to be our main goalkeeper this season. Again, just because of his potential. He is Serbian. We paid 4.5 million for him, which could turn out to be a little bit of a steal. And then our main left winger for this season is Angel Ramon, a Spanish left winger. Bags and bags of potential. Again, fairly professional personality. He came over from Real Madrid to join us for 20.5 million. A very, very good start to life in the Premier League. And if we're having a look at our schedule so far, well, let's have a look at our tactic. This is a tactic we're playing with two wingers this season because both of our best players play better as wingers, as do our backups. So that's kind of what we're going with. Georgic. Or Joik is going to be in goal. Duce and Ramon are the players that we're trying to keep in the side. Because I think they've probably got the most potential other than Ian Fontaine. Who's obviously been out on loan from us. He's been over at Dijon. He had a good season there. He's now come back. He's got good potential as well. So he'll be playing a lot of games this season. If we have a quick look as we were at the schedule. We're doing really, really well so far. The problem is it never quite ends like that. If we just arrange this by date, which for some reason it isn't at the moment. There we go. We can see these are all our friendlies. We had a good good few friendlies. We drew 0-0 to Ipswich at the first game of the season. But since then, we haven't conceded a goal in the last three. We conceded one against Watford. We're looking really, really good. Can we now go and get promoted though this season? Can we get back to the Premier League? Can we get there with a team that's capable of staying there? Because that would be a wonderful end to a very, very difficult rebuild. Well, we have been here before. It is time at the end of our fifth season in charge of Blackburn to see if we can get back to the Premier League. We can see here, we look like we've done fairly well. In fact, looking at the start of this season, we've always started well every season, but this time we've actually continued well as well. There's not a loss until that 1-0 loss against Brentford, which is all the way down in December. There's a lot of green as well, not a lot of amber. There is another loss at the end of December here against Luton. 2 0 loss there, but we don't look like we're conceding a lot. We can see there there's a couple of games, three games on the trot where we don't concede at all. The next ones, we only concede one goal as well. January doesn't look great. There's a couple of losses there. There's another loss in February. But equally, there's a 4-0 win against Swansea. 2-0 win against uh, Portsmouth there. Looking at March, no losses at all. We win all the way through March with only two goals conceded across the four games. And then in April... Once again, we do have a loss against Millwall, but equally not a lot of goals conceded. 3-2 win against Bristol City, 2-0 against QPR, finishing that one off with a 4-1 win against Wigan. And then our last two games of the season are a 2-2 draw against Sheffield Wednesday and a 3-0 win against Nottingham Forest to round up the season. And at the end of this season, it does mean we go up for the second time as champions with 106 points and a 58 goal difference as well which is fantastic we can see down here Fagir has scored 29 goals I'm not sure if that's all in the league let's have a quick look yes yeah, so 29 goals in the league not top goal scorer it goes to Sam Lemaire's over at Watford and the most assists I can see though is it says Mansky uh, Robert Dolce our left back that we signed this season is also in that list, as is Angel Ramon and Ian Fontaine. So four of the top 10 players in terms of assists are from our team, which is really, really good. Says Maski, also the top of the most key passes. Uh, we've got Ian Fontaine, top of dribbles made. We've got most clean sheets this season, Stefan Joik which is really, really good. 22 clean sheets in 46 appearances. Uh, he has conceded a few more than some other people, but he is six in that list of eight, which is really decent as well. Just having a quick look at the squad, you can see 31 goals in total this season in all competitions from Fagir. Our second top goal scorer is uh, Diaz, which I feel like we could still improve. James Garner has got 11. Uh, how did Joe Gelhart end up doing? He ended up scoring three, but he only started three games in all fairness. The other 20 of his games were all off of the bench. We can see he's absolutely devastated at the moment. I'm guessing he wants to leave because he wants some better players playing time uh palestri as well very happy which is a little bit weird 
because he hasn't got a huge amount of game time even if we're looking at potential in this squad angel ramon he's one of our top ones he's had a pretty decent season ian fontaine is coming 51 games that's remembering as well we haven't included him to make sure that he's always in the squad so he's just been picked by the assistant manager as the best player on that right hand side really good season for him as was robert duce as was stefan yorick but winning the league is not all we've done this season we've also managed to go and win the carabao cup in our final season the simulation let's have a quick look see how that actually happened if we go down here and have a look at the schedule quickly who did we have to beat in order to do that let's have a look carabao cup so we had a 5-0 win against accrington uh, back in august to start off our run we then beat west ham who are obviously a premier league team 3-0 in September with goals here from Ian Fontaine, Renan and James Garner and um, Angel Ramon was sent off as well in the 68th minute so we've done well to manage that we beat Manchester City 2-1 Kevin De Bruyne scoring so they were obviously at least putting some of their top players in the team we then beat Leeds another Premier League team in the quarter final it is a 2-2 draw that we win on penalties but we did win nonetheless our two-legged affair against Spurs we lost the first leg 1-0 but we won the second leg 3-1 with goals again from Ian Fontaine we got one there from Diaz and then Mark McGuinness as well and then the final we have won 1-0 against Chelsea I wonder how we actually did in that match if we have a look at the stats you can actually see we were the better team we had more shots we had a better XG we were exactly 50-50 percent on the possession and um, that was our lineup before the day which is really really good chelsea playing havertz pulisic sterling is there a uh, conte still there so it looks pretty much like their first team that could be promising for the season ahead which obviously we are not going to do because that is going to be the end of this simulation i don't know how i feel about it i don't know how we did we kind of got to the premier league this will be our second third time there twice actually in the video third time as of next season which i feel is good we've won a carabao cup we've won two skybet championships that's all really good it's just whether we can stay in the premier league if you want to have a go at that of course you are going to have 50 million a pound to go and do that you can find the link to my patreon down in the description if you want to continue with this save it will be up very very shortly after this video and if you do do that you've got some fantastic players coming through as well jacopo fazzi who we obviously purchased this season we saw a few minutes ago when we uh, went through our transfers we've also got likes of tim hitchliff we can see all these players and martin Barker has got a five-star potential as well. Andrew Allen has got a five-star potential. So there are some really, really good players. That's including the ones who are in the squad already. And we've maybe got at least a decent spine to get through the Premier League. If you haven't enjoyed today's video though, please do drop a like on the video. Subscribe if you haven't already for more content and check out the video that's on the screen now. Bye-bye.